जय श्रीमारायण जय श्रीमारायण जय श्रीमारायण आय पे मै ओबेसिस टू माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्रीमद जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आय पे मै ओबेसिस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आय पे मै ओबेसिस टू आवर पूर्व आचार्य आय पे मै ओबेसिस टू आवर ट्वेल्व अलवार्स I pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi, and I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Manarang. I welcome you here physically at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those that are watching this discourse locally, nationally, and internationally, and I welcome in advance those that are going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on YouTube and the various groups from around the world subsequently. I welcome Lord Ram not only to this ashram but back in his full capacity and potency in this universe and everyone who ever can you hear my declaration you are the luckiest human to be born within this 5000 years the last time the supreme lord was around was in his incarnation as lord shri krishna 5000 years ago and again Lord Ram has spiritually entered the material atmosphere after the temple of his birth was destroyed so everything is a play of god there should be no animosity and hatred against anyone any religion or any other human being to ashe in kalyug to ashe in kalyug temples in india had to undergo whatever they underwent kalyug has set in but the lord continues to show his supremacy and he has given us whoever is alive as a human being in this era to witness tomorrow is very 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 lucky there would not be another event like this up until 427000 years have to pass when lord kalki is going to make his advent so please take tomorrow absolutely seriously those of you that are followers of sanatan dharma there will be no greater day on this earth than tomorrow and subsequently when lord kalki who is already around lord kalki is around he'll become actuated in 427000 years can you imagine how lucky you are in this phase of the leela of lord shri ram this is not a myth it has never been the west to cover up their shenanigans has made the ramayan and the mahabharat a myth however both the ramayan and the mahabharat within its own potency <coughs> it it doesn't need western scientists to prove its existence and within its own potency 
has proven its existence the ram setu and the sunken city of dwarika both the epics have proven that they are 100% authentic there is no scientist born or will ever be born in this universe to prove the vedas wrong no scientist will ever be born at any part of any time in creation to prove the vedas wrong the vedas is the most scientific knowledge that is available to mankind and scientists themselves have bathed their mind in the vedas all the famous scientists have taken the inspiration from the bhagavad gita and they have stated so themselves all discoveries from isaac newton to all the discoveries that they said they discovered remember sages and saints from sanatan dharma are the most proficient scientists in this universe and all scientists take their basis from these saints and sages so it is a very auspicious time make sure you are here this ashram is directly linked to lord shri ram and i will discuss our direct link with lord shri ram in a discourse tomorrow if i discuss it today there's no need for you to be here tomorrow so i'm dangling the carrot i am dangling the carrot all right it is for your benefit it is for your benefit the your attendance tomorrow will benefit you directly you will be in touch of the supreme lord so that is my message for you tomorrow however my discourse today i think it's the third discourse in this year is i want to explain to you why you need to be here why every sanatan dharmi need to be in a satsang and we have to start off by defining sat sang what does sat sang mean what does sat sang mean sat is absolute truth and sangha means the truth spoken with a group of pious people and pious people mean those who believe in a higher supreme being yes so as i've said i've been attending meetings with shavan and along the way we picked up a few passengers Shavan is a Uber driver and he picked up a few passengers along the way and those meetings are also sat sangs those meetings are sat sangs in fact those meetings currently are more pure than meetings in ashrams mosques churches synagogues because in those meetings not only the guru speaks the truth like yeah there every participant speaks the absolute truth those meetings cannot exist if there's no truth and honesty so those meetings 
are absolutely potent and absolutely powerful. Today we had a multi-racial, multi-ethnic meeting. Every race was there, every culture was there, every religion was there. And the topic was unity. Topic was unity. And this topic emanates from the Rig Veda, the oldest scripture on this planet. It will remain the oldest scripture in this planet. There is nothing that precedes, no scripture that precedes or will ever precede the Rig Veda. Not, no scripture can be discovered by any archaeologist at any point in time that will precede the teachings of the Vedas. And in the Rig Veda it is stated quite distinctly, we are one diverse family. And I was in another meeting on Friday and there was a white guy that was sharing and he entered Narcotics Anonymous in the 80s in the 80s and what was being practiced in South Africa in the 80s but when he entered the meeting all races all creeds all cultures were present in the meeting and inside the meeting there was only unity there was only unity yet the country was practicing apartheid in a small room size of this ashram, there was no apartheid. There was no apartheid. Where there is God, there is no apartheid. Where there is God, there is no religious distinctions. Where there is God, there is only unity. God and unity go hand in hand. So we're learning, I'm picking up information and all the information that I have picked up so long and so far is contained in the Vedas. It's contained in the Vedas. So my topic, my topic for discussion today is defective characters. Defective characters. Each and every human being is born with a defect. Each and every human being is born with a defect. If you did not have a defect, you would be in vacant. If you did not have a defect, you would be with the Supreme Lord in vacant, serving Him and having a relationship with Him in vacant. In this universe, no human has entered the material atmosphere without a defect. So we need to understand that at creation, Lord Brahma computed in this universe all the defects all the vices and all the virtues. Lord Brahma created all the defects, all the vi vices and all the virtues. If Jessica got an anger problem, it just it didn't happen by mistake. When Jessica was born, Lord Narayan said, okay, 70% anger must be injected in your system, 22% resentment, 80% noise. <laughs> she was just not born from a mother's womb and picked up anger somewhere. hundred percent bossy <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that was not picked up somewhere as her soul entered her mother's womb that calculation was already done by the supreme lord as per her previous life merits whatever she did in her previous life and you must marry a husband and he must go bald through you all written down perfectly perfectly sanatan dharma is perfect mathematics not even 1 mm off because maths cannot be defective mathematics cannot be defective so when jessica was born there's a whole list i don't want to give you next week nobody will be in satsang all right she has a whole volume so everyone's character whatever character you are clothed in today it is precise 100% like i got a devotee her name starts with an a i don't want to mention her name and her surname starts with b last year every week i was getting a tiktok how good a guru is and this year i'm looking third week is gone in the year i can't find that tiktok on how good a guru is you know defective character <laughs> defective not consistent when you say how great your guru is you must say it consistently you must say it consistently look we are celebrating lord ram's character aren't we mm. we don't know his person but that character that he portrayed in this universe those ideals that he set for humanity we are worshiping that character yes and who molded that character his guru lord ram's guru vasista muni molded the ideal character of lord ram yes the guru molded the supreme lord's character because lord ram submitted 100% to his guru and along the way every ideal that was instilled in lord ram was the hard work of his guru vasista muni lord shri krishna's character was molded by whom by his guru sandipan muni and this is how important the guru system is not only in sanatan dharma everywhere in all religion in all races throughout humanity the dispeller of knowledge look india is on the brink of becoming the most spiritual country in the world again yes a mm -hmm. uh, gen india was robbed of its spirituality or her spirituality 1000 consecutive years 1000 consecutive years 700 years by the moguls and 300 years by the british yes it is the guru system that is responsible 
for India's spiritual resurgence. Is it not? Who kept the spirituality alive when India was being raped? It is only the Guru system. It is only the Guru system. And that is how significant the Guru system is in the world. At creation, the Guru system is at number three. When the Supreme Lord creates this universe, the third point of creation is the Guru system. And then everything else is created. Man is number 11. Man is number 11 in creation. Number three is the Guru system. And the Guru system works everywhere. The Guru system works everywhere. Tell me what you do without information. What can you do without knowledge? Who can do anything in this universe without knowledge? Which human being can function in this universe without knowledge? You need knowledge for every aspect of your life. You need to know where your toilet is. You need to know where your bedroom is. You need to know where your kitchen is. Yes? Is that not knowledge? Is that not knowledge? Someone has to teach you as a child when you grow up. Your parents have to teach you where each functionary is placed. Yes or no? Every child is taught. The work that you do, you are taught to drive. All of you are drivers. You need knowledge to drive. Yes? Every aspect of your life there was a teacher, yes? Everything you know today, did you discover it or did you learn it? And if you learnt it, it had to come through a system of knowledge and that system of knowledge is called the Guru Principle. That system of knowledge is called the Guru principle. In the material universe, it is stated Mata Pita Guru Devam. That's, that's your material knowledge that you attained. Your mother taught you everything from the time you was born with the assistance of your father for your material upliftment. Yes or no? And then all the various teachers from primary school right up to your university level, your professors are all teachers, yes or no? And then if you want to learn spirituality, and only spirituality can change your character, your character defect. Only a spiritual guru can change your character defect. You do not have capacity to change it. You can tone it down, you can understand it. But for it to be changed permanently, you need a bona fide spiritual master. You understand? And that is what Mata Pita Guru Devam means in Sanatan Dharma. That you are always obligated to your teachers. You are always obligated to your teachers. You know, I was in my fifties and I saw one of my teachers and I had a cigarette in my mouth. What do you think happened to the cigarette? Mm -hmm. Fell off very, very fast mm -hmm. and I, I greeted my teacher. But I see students of today 
they can drink with their teachers. Yeah, I've seen it. They can drink with their teachers, they can smoke with their teachers. Look at the behavior in my time and look at the behavior in this time. Look at the character defects in my time and look at the character de defects in this current time. Yeah, your children can use FNBs in the same room that you are. My mother never heard the F word come out of my mouth. I, I rather die. You understand? But today it's become a third language or a second language. You understand? Because this is because we are not practicing Mata Pita Guru Devam. In the material level we are not practicing it. In my time it was a it was a natural practice. It was a natural practice. Today children got no respect for their parents. Children got no respect for their parents. Because they can tell their parents what to do. They can debate with their parents. In our time there was no debates. There was only kan patis. You opened your mouth, you got a warmer, you was put behind the door, and if they forgot about you behind the door, you stayed there. And no parents forgot putting you behind the door. When your stomach was making noise and you banged the door and they acted like they didn't hear you, they knew you were there. You understand? So this year, if you come into my satsang as a parent, as a child, as a husband, as a wife, and you're not prepared to change, don't waste your petrol. Don't waste your petrol and come to the satsang. You look nice on my social media, hall full. I don't want that. I'd rather have two people here, empty hall, but two people that's coming here and you are coming here prepared to change. Coming here prepared to change. You understand? And use people in the satsang to change. Just like those those meetings that we go to, we learn from other people in the meeting. Ask Jessica, when you came five years ago to the satsang, what was your mouth frequency? <laughs> and ask her today, what is your mouth frequency? Ask her how high your anger was and how bossy you was when you landed in satsang and ask her today, where's your bossiness, where's your anger, and where's your mouth frequency. Then learn from her. What you must do? Learn from her, and when you go home, try to lower your mouth frequency. Ricky, speak to Jessica <laughs> after satsang. All right? and learn from each other. That is why we have a congregation. We have this congregation so we can learn from each other and you know this ashram is working because we have somebody in this ashram that changed. Do you understand? Many people in this ashram change find out how to make that change. Find out how to make that change. Remember, there is no one that's perfect. No human being is perfect. And even when we die, we're not going to die perfect. But start making that change. Because making that change will usher in peace in your life will usher in peace in your life. You understand? 
So this is a practical satsang. Here yeah, you don't come and wish one day things might work out for you. When you come here, things must work out for you. This is a practical, tangible satsang and I ran it like this for 10 years. Now I'm on my 11th year and I've been hard and strict in the entire 10 years. And the reason I've been hard and strict is because I want this satsang to make a tangible difference in your life. So I'm giving you the secrets. Most of the people in this world do not understand what is happening with them, with their family, around them, in their employment, in their business. They don't have an understanding. And when you do not have knowledge, what happens to your sanity? If I tell you to go from here to Checkers and you don't know where Checkers is, what will happen to your sanity? Your sanity will be disturbed, won't it? Because you don't know. And this is the life you're living. You're living a life every day and you're going insane because you don't no. You don't know why this is happening in your life. You don't know why that is happening in your life. You don't know why this relationship is working. You don't know why that relationship is not working. You get up every morning, you light your lamp and the story is the same. Because there is no scripture. No scripture where it is stated you light your lamp and everything will be fine. No way it's written. It is not scientific. You understand? So you need to know why what is happening to you now. You need to know that. You need to know. You need to know why people connected to you are in a particular position. When you know what happens to you, If I tell you to go to checkers and you don't know, what is your state of mind? Miserable. As soon as I give you a GPS on your phone where checkers is, what will happen to your state of mind? You don't have to read checkers. Right here in this room, as soon as I show you where checkers is, what will happen to your state of mind? You still have to go up my driveway. You still have to go down the road. You still have to stop at a few robos. Uh, uh, if there's load shedding, you might meet with an accident when the robos are not working. A whole lot of things can happen. And generally there's, there's civil disobedience down the road. A whole lot of things can happen before you reach checkers. But as soon as I showed you where checkers is, what was the state of your mind? Then you still have to travel to checkers, yes? Similarly, if I tell you what is wrong with you now, if I tell you what is wrong with you now, what will be your state of mind? What will happen to your state of mind? You become peaceful. You know what is wrong with you. And you know what the solution is. If we teach you what is wrong, and if we give you the solution, what happens to your state of mind? Because it's only your mind that makes you miserable. It's only your mind that confuses you. It's only your mind that can bring peace. All of you understand? So, in Sanatan Dharma, we tell you that you inherited character defects, you inherited virtues, and you inherited vices as per your previous lifetime. 
as per your previous lifetime and in this life in this life those vices virtues and character defects is contained in your mind it is contained in your mind and when you follow a bona fide spiritual master from any religion whichever religion you belong in that spiritual master must be bona fide that spiritual master can redeem your defects that spiritual master can redeem your defects and when your defects are redeemed what happen to your mind it becomes free of the virus that you inherited from the previous life yes does it become free of the virus that you that you inherited this incarnation and inheritance continues it is eternal you can't stop it if you commit suicide you'll hang around this universe for a very very long time god won't give you another body soon if anyone commits suicide you will hang around in spirit form for many many millions of years until god decides to give you another body remember there are 8.4 million species of bodies if you committed suicide be very very unlikely you will get a human body again very unlikely you'll get a human body again and i'm stating all of this with confidence we not guessing that there is incarnation and we are not guessing there is rebirth we are not guessing there is karma all this has been already proven even by material science even by material science so when you have this opportunity when you are in the presence of a guru you must be an opportunist don't go into the material world and be an opportunist be a spiritual opportunist be a spiritual opportunist take everything that the guru is giving you come with horse and trailers don't come with teaspoons and don't come with strainers don't come with strainers many of you come with strainers when you leave this gate all what i gave you is lost by the time you reach the top gate because you came with strainers everything is lost be serious be it is the west it is the west that dismantled sanatan dharma it is the west that messed up the vedas now it is time lord ram is back lord ram is back his name is been sung by every race by every religion by in every language there is nothing more momentous and there will never be anything more momentous than this event from tomorrow you all can see it you all on tv you all on social media i am not listening to the bhajan that mata ji sang every second bhajan on tiktok is that bhajan what mata ji sang it's been sung around the world there's a lady in germany sang it there are muslims singing it there are christians singing it there are blacks singing it besides mahadev besides mahadev 
all right right around the world there's this feeling because it's the absolute truth and it is from that feeling and that essence i give my discourses it is from that essence that source of knowledge that i give you my discourses every sunday so take it seriously you can see its existence with your own eyes lord ram's existence is being witnessed by this whole 8 billion people that's in this universe tell me in which corner tomorrow that on which corner of the globe that consecration will not be witnessed every continent will be witnessing the consecration of the ram temple it's a frenzy it's a spiritual revolution it is something that you cannot describe because it is the very soul within you your soul your essence is connected to the essence of lord shri ram there's a man that's walking on his hands to ayodhya he's walking on his hands there's two two seven or eight year old children that skating to ayodhya on skates there's a female that never speak for the past 30 years will 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 talk her first word tomorrow she took a vow there are so many stories linked to the supreme lord no science no scientist no religion no religionist can call this a myth because you can't experience a myth no one in this universe can experience a myth this overpowering spiritual potency is inherent in every soul it's inherent in every plant it's inherent in every insect there's a buzz this universe is being spiritualized again be part of it you can be unconscious within this consciousness or you can actively participate and be part of the spiritual revolution and journey so i like to see you again tomorrow at 7 pm and there's some of you that's coming to cook in fact If I remembered this last week I would have asked you to book off sick and be here the whole day and be here the whole day that is how important this function is tomorrow you are never going to in your lifetime in this current lifetime right up to lord kalki ever experience the potency that's going to be experienced around the world but you can't just experience it from the outside like you just can't pick up your phone and phone anyone you have to have data and that data that data for ram's consecration is here at the ashram all of you understand there is no excuse for anyone not to be here in the evening if you can't do for god how god can do for you if you can't do for god how can god do for you remember ayodhya was dilapidated that place was forgotten the birthplace of lord ram was forgotten today it's one of the busiest and buzziest place on this planet earth there's trains racing to uh, ayodhya there's buses racing to uh, ayodhya there's rickshaws racing to uh, ayodhya everything is happening in ayodhya and witnessed by the world witnessed by the world the world 
on its own. Nobody put a gun to the Western world and told them, witness this. They have come out in their numbers and witnessing it on their own. And it all started with Diwali a few years back, when all the, all the governments around the world started celebrating Diwali. Diwali was celebrated in the White House. It was celebrated not with Rishi Sunak. Sunak. He just came yesterday. Even before Rishi Sunak, it was celebrated in the British Parliament in Canada. Around the world, people started celebrating Diwali. And tomorrow is the biggest and the greatest Diwali you are ever going to witness in your life. Tomorrow, biggest, most profound, greatest, most spiritually potent Diwali will be experienced and witnessed on the 22nd of January. Why did they choose 22nd of January 2024 to do the consecration? Again, Sanatan Dharma is absolute science. So the entire planetary system, the entire universe is in the time of Maha Vishnu, is in the time of Maha Vishnu. It is the most auspicious time astronomically and that is why tomorrow has been chosen. Tomorrow's date and the exact time and this is Sanatan Dharma. The planets affect all of you. Shanti, during full moon, what is Hemita's behavior? <laughs> now you don't have to worry why Hemita is behaving like that. Look out of your flat window. Oh, full moon. You understand? It goes for everyone. It goes for everyone. All the planets affect every human and the destiny of every human. That's why you do that Gara prayers. You know that Gara because of the planetary influence in your life. Planets are satellites. They take photographs of whatever you are doing every milli of millisecond and they provide it to Yamraj. You all know who's Yamraj? Whatever you do, Ricky, whilst the Guru is downstairs in his kutir, you there talking. Guru can't see you, but the planets are photographing you. And when you go to Yamraj, when you go to Yamraj, he has a full record from the planetary system itself. That is why the planetary system influences your life. The planetary system influences your life because they are satellites. They watch you. They watch every movement of every living entity that is on this planet. All of you understand? It's an exact science. It's a proper science. It's an absolute science. Absolute science. You can't change it. You can walk out of this ashram and say the Guru is talking. Bull. That won't change the planetary system. It will continue to exert its influence over you. All of you understand? That is why full moon not affecting Jessica as much as it used to. <laughs> yeah, once you come in the Guru's domain, then the moons even stop their influence on you. You understand? So, as long as you have a Guru, the Guru can re-compute your destiny, where the planetary systems will have no influence. Because the influence of the planetary system is there from your previous karma. It's computed through your previous karma. All of you understand? So, I can't give you a more clearer message on how to come out of your misery. 
I can't give you a more clearer message than how to come out of your misery. I've witnessed myself and Mataji has witnessed good couple hundreds of people come into the ashram with tears in their eyes. And we have witnessed those that followed us, doesn't matter for how long, but the tears were dried up very, very quickly. Tears were dried up very, very quickly. The ball is in your court. Jai Shri Manare.